Hello everyone, in today's edition of Inspirational Friday, I am going to share with you the story of a young man who grew up with just his grandmother after his mother, brother and sister had died in a small village outside East London in South Africa. This young man defied all the odds that were staked against him when he scored South Africa's first ever try in a World Cup rugby final. With 14 appearances for the Springboks to date, his background did not deter him from following his dreams of becoming a professional rugby player. This is the rugby winning story of Makazoli Mapimpi. Take a look. Mapimpi has been outstanding. I think it's 13 tries and 13 tests and it was his chip and chase and effectively his try which broke the camel's back, wasn't it? It was a straw that broke the camel's back. I was reading up on his story yesterday. The guy's 29 years old. He's only been a professional rugby player for a few years. And what rugby's given him is, is a way out. It's given him hope. It's given him opportunity. 29 years old. His, his mother's dead. Um, his brother and his sister both were killed. And when you look at those stories and you look at the, the impact that rugby can make, rugby's effectively fostered him and has given him an opportunity to make something of his life, to be able to inspire other people, He's a guy that pretty much came from the bush, came from the bush and worked his way up. And that kind of inspirational story, which we don't hear in this country because we, very few people come from those kind of positions. Strong, he's fast, he's so competitive. He was unbelievably raw, but he was very talented and he, and he wasn't bummed, you know, he wasn't afraid of nothing. The previous year, how can I trust this guy? And then he wins the World Cup for you. Yeah, I grew up with uh, the mother and... I was playing, we're calling Sunday League at the time. It's not even including in other region at the time. I remember I was like, uh, I think 13. At that time, we, we didn't have like a, under 13, something like that. And I was playing like with the, with the old men at the time. And I remember I started like playing like number 10 at the time. Moments in rugby hardly ever get bigger than this, do they? <laughs> Never. Uh, I don't want to lie. I uh, didn't even think of it. I was like under 19 with all the bulldogs at the time, but the people keep telling me uh, one day I'll be a springbok, but I didn't believe that thing because it's too far for me. The wait is over. So we've got two teams here with unfinished business, but this time on neutral ground. When I get like selected from the squad, the World Cup squad, uh, the first of all, I was I was I was scared, and and also I was excited to to hear the the, the big news for me, and I was looking forward to be there in the squad. Uh, my friend, uh, mother didn't believe that thing um, because I'm always joking around when I'm back at home. Uh, one day I would do this thing, one day I would do that. Oh, I never, you never do, you never, never. So yeah. By New Zealand, Moana. William chasing back from Mapimpi. Also, it was tough from uh, from the start, starting World Cup because we lost against uh, the New Zealand. So I feel like it's always like that. Every every single match, it's always tough because it's it's World Cup. I think it's every game. It, it was vital for me. The in ball from Brit to Makazoli, Mapimpi. A good line from Mapimpi, hitting the gap on a great angle, showing his pace. Well done. I think the, the, the time was, it was a, a good feeling for me because I, I think I did well for, for the team. I think it was, it was good for me to, to beat like Namibia and Italy. Really the lose trip for Mapimpi, and away he goes. Try for Makazoli Mapimpi. This bruise and well, I'll be delighted and say. Who's Makazoli playing for that day? Is <laughs> No, I, you know, he was playing, I think, obviously, you know, he was playing for South Africa. And I think if you talk to him, he, I don't know, do you know the story about the jerseys? Of the, um, on, on the back of your number, you had to have uh, family members, you know, you can give him photos of family members. He only had photos of himself. <laughs> because he didn't have anybody else. And they'll say, why are you doing this? And he says, he's got nobody, his brother died. You know, his mom died there, his father, he doesn't have a photo. So he doesn't play for one thing, he's just got 
Mess of heart. Mess of heart. Uh, the toughest one was like, um, was Japan. came away and we see Japan did well in the post stages and we saw Japan in 2015 through the Springbok team so we need to be sharp on the game. And the back it comes, ball pass across it, Mpimpi, Mpimpi, Marcus O Mpimpi! He's a try scoring machine for South Africa! In the first half was tough. And Japan was coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. The game was tough at the time. Well, finds Paul Wright who gets through. Floats it wide to LaRue. Don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Mapipi is in again. We're off to the semis. For Japan here, the Cinderella story comes to an end. I was speaking to Lukanyu uh, one of the days before the finals. I think it's our time now to win the World Cup and now to give people hope back at home. And we're not playing for us only. Is it a history and is it we're playing for the fans back at home, playing for the people to come up together. Rugby World Cup 2019 in Japan comes down to this. The International Stadium, Yokohama, Makazora Mapimpi. Five tries in this Rugby World Cup. Try that we've ever scored in a World Cup final. And scored by possibly the player that has come from the most hopeless situation in the history of Springbok Rugby. I was like, I was nervous. I don't want to lie, I was nervous. And I, also I was excited to be in the final. I wasn't like emotional. And, and one thing I was like thinking about to win the, the, the trophy. This one Gile Stick has done so much work with this back three, their aerial skills. He's got them explosively off the ground. Makazolo Mapimpi, he has worked phenomenally hard. We had like a good coaches and you know, always motivating us before the game. We can win this game, something like that. So I was thinking about the game. After the tackle from Wilson, beautiful hands from Marks. Now Pippi! The Japan head for Luke and Yuan! And now Pippi! Oh, that is just glorious from the Springboks! Yeah, I think. Uh... That was, a, I think, it was a communication between me and Lukanyu, and Lukanyu saw the space behind, so he shouted, I must lose chip. He caught the ball, and then I was like next to him, and then he decided to post the ball. You know? and like, honestly, I didn't, I didn't expect, but it was a risk at the end of the day if Lukanyu was take the ball to, to, to the, the line. Well, there was, was a guy who was coming from behind, you know, so. I think him, he saw the opportunity, it's going to be the, the, the clear one if he's going to give me the, the ball. Six joy in this Rugby World Cup for Mokasora Mapipi. Yeah, I think everyone was asking the same question, why um, I'm running away from him. Because he just passed the ball to me and um, I'm always trying to explain what's going on. I was trying to celebrate because I'm that guy who always liked to celebrate and I didn't celebrate the whole like, World Cup and that that was the final. So that time I was doing that thing, I was thinking about celebrate and the only thing was going to my mind that time was like, okay, it's too early. Let me stop doing this thing. I don't know what's going on, what's going to happen after after this. You know, like, oh, okay, let me stop. And then everyone's just come to me. I still remember because I went to just to shake hands with uh, uh, Cheslan at the time, and then I went back and 
Coach Jago is always running outside the church line. So come back to Jago and say that the game is over now, we're done now with the champs. So he was like laughing, yeah, yeah. There it is! The gong has sounded! I think the most of the guy was praying, going down, praying something like that. And then starting to celebrate everyone. Now he's coming, shaking hands. The guy was outside, the bench was outside. And there is indeed a cup of gold at the end of the South African rainbow in the presence of their president, Cyril Ramaphosa. I didn't try that time, I don't want to lie, but I was excited. And that time I was thinking about back at home because I think we had like two months in Japan with the two weeks. That time I was like, okay, tomorrow we're going home now. I'm excited. And I can't wait to come back home. The Springboks 